Good morning, everyone. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the lessons. Uh, 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, mm, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104, verses 25 to 35 and 37. Please join me in saying this psalm responsively by full verse. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There move the ships. And there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide their face, they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. 
A reading from the book of Revelation to John. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. 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 The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. We have three readings today that I think form a process for our journey as Christians. The first is about promise. The second is about passion. And the third is about perseverance. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's getting them ready for the time when he would not be with them. And you know the interesting thing? They still didn't get it. He had been with them for almost three years. They still didn't get it. It's almost like us. We don't always get it. It needs to be mentioned again and again. But Jesus says, I'm going to send you someone that's going to be your advocate. I'm going to promise you that this advocate will help you through it all. So don't fear. Don't fear. In the second lesson from Acts, 
talks about passion. Passion. The disciples are gathered. The Holy Spirit comes upon them with a great wind and fire. And they are transformed. And they go out to speak to the crowd that's been gathered there for the harvest. Because in those days, the Pentecost was the harvest. And they're from all over. And they can hear in their own language. And that's like us here gathered this morning. We come from many places, from Arundel, Sanford, Wells, Old Orchard, Kennebunk, Kennebunkport, Saco. I probably left some out, but the point is, we're all together, and we've all had different experiences, but God is speaking to us and is giving us the gifts that we need to do the work that is set before us. And the third is about persistence. And pers um, persistence and perseverance. Perseverance. What are we willing to risk for the kingdom? What are we willing to give of ourselves for the kingdom, for the word to be preached? What are we willing to give? And what are we willing to risk? Back in 1994, which is like the dark ages for most of us, <laughs> I was sitting in church like you were today, you are today, and I had made the journey from two houses over from the Roman Catholic Church to St. Margaret's in Belfast, an Episcopal church. I was relatively new there. And the priest who was visiting preached on risk. And what are you willing to risk for the kingdom. Now, I had been thinking about and talking to the rector about ordination to the priesthood. What was I willing to risk? Gee, I was having a comfortable life. I was a school administrator. I owned my own home. I had a nice car. Everything was there for me. But what are you willing to risk? Well, you know what I risked. What are you willing to risk? We're not all going to be ordained, but we're all ordained by baptism. That's when the Holy Spirit came on us. That's what the ministry that we're celebrating. You all matter. Everything that you do in your life matters. But what are you willing to risk? One of my favorite spiritual authors is a Roman Catholic nun named Joan Chittister. And so, a couple years ago, well, in 2019, she wrote the following. There is a risk to every life. Those who risk nothing risk much more, the Talmud says. While we keep our heads down, our mouths closed, our public reputations unblotted, Thanks to the silence we keep in the face of great public issues of the day, the pillars of society erode in front of us. The Constitution flounders against the political ambitions of the very people pledged to protect it. The poor get even poorer. The middle class watches their retirement go to dust. It is to us in this place that the scripture calls more clearly. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. We must not fear the darkness. We must simply resolve to carry light into wherever we are. The fire, the passion of Pentecost. She continues, the call to discern the difference between what is holy and what is simply popular between what is and what should be is of the essence of the good life. 
The work of God is in our hands. To ignore that is to ignore the very fullness of life. Every prophet contemplated the price of the risk and went on regardless, calling to the world to become its best self, and so must we. Our best selves. What does that look like? Our best selves. And so you and I on this Pentecost Sunday are called. We are given the gift. The gift is here. The gift of passion to do what God is calling each of us to do. And it's different for each of us. And it's not just about in this place. It's about in our homes. It's in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our towns. The promise has been given. The passion is here. And now we are called to persevere. Amen. And so as a reminder of what we are called to when we renew our baptismal vows, will you please stand if you are able and turn to your bulletin. My brothers and sisters, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will to God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will to God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will to God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will go to God's house. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. In joyful celebration of the Holy Spirit's power among us, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill every church, this city, this state, the nation, and the world. Fill each of us with the love of Jesus Christ and empower us to reach out to one another, our neighbors, strangers, and enemies that they may know that they are loved by you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, bring your solace to refugees, immigrants, and all those displaced by war and natural disaster. Give your strength to all who work towards justice and sustain us in the care of your creation that they may come together in peace and understanding. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Come, Holy Spirit, send your strength to our local community. We pray for teachers, first responders, and those in our community whose voices are not heard. Give us strength to share God's word and to speak for justice and peace. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for those in authority in our state and nation, especially Joseph, our president, and Janet, our governor, that God's spirit of wisdom and compassion might permeate and break through the barriers that divide us. Open our hearts to our fellow citizens, that your fire might burn away all selfishness and pride, and we may truly respect the dignity of every human being. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire us to be a comforting presence to those who suffer mentally, physically, or spiritually. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list, Jim Andrews, Sue Andrews, Mary Arcidia Cono, Jackie Belmonte, Jamie Carpenter, Patty Gagney, Roland Gagney, Louise McCormick, Suzanne Robinson, Maureen Summers, Michelle Mondor, Delta Fuller, Elaine McClellan, Barbara Hill, Dorothy Matheson, Davis Robinson, Sue Cryer, Sue Currier, Carolyn Kershaw, Norm Anderson, Bob Gunter, Nancy Tuttle, Sheila Kaiser, Donna Bacon, Jillian Charbonneau, and Donna Costello. We pray for our family and friends listed in today's bulletin who have asked for our prayers of healing. I invite your prayers, either silently or aloud. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Your fire drew Moses to a bush that burned but was not consumed and enlivened those who have gone before us. We pray for those who have died, especially John Tuttle, whose life was celebrated yesterday, Dick Clinton, in whose memory the vigil candle is lit, and for Dennis and Martine Ouellette, in whose memory the flowers on the altar have been given. Enlighten each of us with that same fire, that our lives may burn as brightly with your love for the generation to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated just for a few announcements? Well, as I mentioned, let's see, make sure I'm not on two mics. Nope, I'm not. As I mentioned, promise, passion, pers perseverance. We need some folks who may not realize they are being called right now to risk for a ministry that we so desperately need at St. David's. Are you ready? It's called the Altar Guild. <laughs> now, 
everybody loves to come in and see the colors and have bread and wine ready and lights and the whole shebang. We know what it takes to just have a dinner party at our home. This doesn't take as long as a dinner party. You don't have to go grocery shopping. You don't have to prepare it. You just got to set the table. And there's two folks that are doing it constantly, and they need some help. And you may say, oh, I don't know how to do it. They'll show you. They'll show you. Well, I don't want to do it, but maybe my something will do it. Some of you are being called to share in that ministry. So think about it. Pray about it. And if you have an hour, maybe once a month, you could help out. Or maybe you love to iron. <laughs> but they're made out of Dacron, of all the things. Just Dacron. It's not hard to do. So you don't have to set the table. You just got to get the napkins ready. So think about it, folks. They need help. And if you came in one Sunday and there was nothing done, what would you do? You'd learn how to do it. But we're not asking you to just come on, on a Sunday and start doing it. They'll help you. So please, 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 please think about that, OK? Um, and there are other men, uh, things in the um, schedule or in the announcements that need to be attended to. But that's primary at this point, OK? And also a reminder, I think everybody knows the drill here, but if you're coming to communion, it's two hands to receive the bread, one hand if you want to receive a non-gluten, a, a non oops, gluten-free, yeah, gluten-free. Um, and the wine, we are not drinking from the common cup yet, so the, our deacon will come among you and present the cup to you as a reminder that we are all connected with Jesus. And if you do not want to do that, but you want a blessing, just come forward like this, okay? So that's what we do at communion time, to share together, to be one, as Jesus calls us to be one. Any other announcements? Okay, John. While we're on reminders about things that uh, need to be done, um, there are several people out in the community who depend on our food donations, and uh, in recent weeks, we've had scant food donations, so I'd just like to remind you that we still have a bucket out in the uh, front lobby where you can drop your donations every Sunday or bring them in during the week, and we will get them delivered to uh, the uh, community outreach services here in Kennebunk for that purpose. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. So let's have a joke. Think it's a good idea? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. We need to come with joy to God's table. So a teenage boy goes in, and his father's reading the newspaper, and he says to him, Dad, there's water in the carburetor. The father looks at him, and he says, oh, for heaven's sakes, there's no water in the carburetor. He said, Dad, I'm telling you, there's water in the carburetor. And the father says, you don't even know what a carburetor is. Dad, I'm telling you, there's water in the carburetor. OK, OK, take me and show me where's the car. It's in the swimming pool. <laughs> so let us bring the gifts of our life, our labor, and our love to God's holy table.
Bless, O God, these gifts, the ministry of thy holy church. Amen. Our service continues in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give and it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise. The Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and the earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where bl with blessed David and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed in him in your, on your, in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Mary and John, as you go forth from the altar of this church, bearing the sacrament of our Lord's presence, may you carry forth as well our prayers, the love of this congregation, and the spirit of oneness in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of our God who made us, who saves us, and who travels with us be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn number 516 is in your worship. Reach within and ask yourself what you're willing to risk, and then go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>